time getting the duct tape. All right, got some genuine tractor buying fuel here. That tractor. Okay, wow, what an absolute monster. So eye level is about the top of, or I'm sorry, the bottom of the shiny part of the cylinder on that back hill right now. <laughs> Front of it's only been crashed into stuff like once, so that's pretty cool. This is why I do not have much love for Austin. It is 2.25 in the afternoon and we are about to break 20 miles an hour. Are we gonna do it? Cars are slowing down. We did it, all right, now we have to slow back down. But anyway, we are going to pick up a tractor. I got the tractor, really good deal with a uh, very nice gentleman and uh, it was totally worth sitting in traffic for. Hopefully it'll also be worth getting home at like 11 p.m. for. I don't know exactly what this weighs, but it's a pretty heavy machine, 95 horsepower. I think we're pretty much at at least what this trailer can legally hold. And uh, I'm glad it does not weigh any more, but let's, uh, let's hope for a safe trip home. And I cannot wait to show you guys this thing because for what I uh, paid for this thing, I was really expecting a major project. But it actually, and I know famous last words, it seems like a pretty solid old tractor, runs and drives. I tried it at all the gears other than like one because the guy came up to show me something else. And uh, I'm actually quite optimistic. This is the biggest tractor that I've ever owned. Like I said, 95 horsepower. Not a lot in, uh, in automotive terms, but you know, six cylinder diesel probably weighs <laughs> a lot. <laughs> and uh, yeah, pretty, uh, pretty thrilled. This thing is an absolute tank. So check it out, this is a 930 series tractor. I'm not really an expert on what all the differences between the individual models are yet. So it's got a six cylinder naturally aspirated diesel engine. You can see one of the interesting things about these case tractors is they don't really use, you know, like one giant head for all six cylinders. They use three individual heads, each one for two cylinders. So that way if there's a problem with one, you know, you just take that head off. It's actually a pretty decent design and it costs money and it shows that when this thing was built it was really made for the long haul. But you guys know I always say on any old tractors or anything like this that I pick up one of the first things I do is rewire it because you really have two options. You can sit around and jack with with wiring that always needs to be messed with every time you use the tractor just about or you can just take like a day and rewire it and call it good. Now, one of the weak points of this generation of tractor is the power steering. Come on, camera, get with the program here. Is the power steering. It uses a belt-driven power steering pump, which uh, is a little bit lacking, let's say, and it squeals, and like the belt comes loose, and they eat belts, and it's just, you know, it's one of the few weak points of this. But it looks like someone put on a Delco one wire? Three wire, maybe? Three wire-ish alternator. <laughs> So we got that, and look at the size of this. This air intake is like the size of my forearm. Intake manifold here. Death trap level wiring for the, um, I don't think that's a glow plug. That's like a grid heater or something, I think they call that, which actually works. At least it did last night. The guy, <laughs> the guy figured out how to make it work. Uh, let's see, I'm told the lights will work. Famous last words. I'll just convert them to LEDs because they're cooler. All right. Okay, wow, what an absolute monster. We have an oil pressure gauge, which works when the tractor's running. I'm gonna see if I can start this up here momentarily. At least it worked yesterday. It has, uh, reads 2,123 hours. This does not work, unfortunately, so who knows how many hours are actually on this thing. And then, like, several other gauges, I don't think they do anything. This one's not even, like, in here tight. Oh! I gotta cut the crap out of my fingers here on the corner of this thing, otherwise I'll wonder what could have been. Okay, so it's got a high-low range and a four-speed transmission. This is one thing I don't really care for about the tractor. I can already tell it's really hard to find gears in this thing. Ugh. Of course, it's going to work perfectly-ish on camera, but like I was grinding this all over the place. There's not like uh, any sort of guide or anything on this. You just kind of have to know where they are. It's working better now that I'm filming it, of course. 
And also now that I've done it a couple times. So we got that, got a foot throttle up here, clutch. The linkages really need to be adjusted. This clutch is like, I don't know if you can see it, it's almost flat in its upward position. So we're like, oh, mashing that thing down. But it's actually pretty comfortable to drive, at least around the guy's yard. Uh, the brakes are another weak point on this. Like even by old tractor standards, they're supposed to be really bad. Uh, but I'm told they're easy to fix and they are pretty adjustable. So we're gonna take this thing for a spin here, hopefully. Hydraulic controls, I guess, I don't really know. Oh. And most of a position control there. This was probably a sending unit for a, I don't know, a fuel gauge or something. I don't think it even has a fuel gauge. I don't know if there's treasures in there. Not really, yeah, okay. And it is tall. I'm a six, three-ish, and as you can see this platform, it's like almost up to my ribs. It's really, really, really tall. It's a very tall tractor. But since you're so high up and you sit a little bit further forward than the center of the wheels, I'm told that's one thing that can make these things so comfortable to operate. Uh, but you know, whatever, I guess we'll just have to get it out in the field and see. I wonder what the oil in the back of this thing looks like, but I don't even know where there's a, uh, I don't even know where the dipstick is. Man, look at how straight this thing is. That's like mint condition pretty much. A little smashed in on the, on these things here, but I mean, shoot, for 50, 60 years old, I think this was made in the mid 60s sometime. This thing's mint. Yeah, hopefully it's just a brake adjustment. I'm pretty sure the brakes are in that thing. There's one of those on each side, so I think that's what that is. Front of it's only been crashed into stuff like once, so that's pretty cool. Okay, let's see here. Engine oil is a little low, but it's a nice, healthy, dark color. I don't see any milky, like, water residue in there or anything. So this might actually turn out to be a pretty good tractor. All right, so we'll see what we got going on back here. You can see there's some sheet metal damage over on the back of the fuel tank, but whatever. I'm told this is a 50 gallon tank. And from what I read on the internet by giant old tractor standards, this beast is actually supposed to be pretty fuel efficient. It's got two sets of hydraulic remotes. I guess that's what those, at least a couple of those levers are. That has to be the fuel shutoff thing, which is leaking, and actually I just saw a drip fall, so yeah, they were right about that. Man, this guy really represented this thing well. He even got the details, like, that just that little fuel leak. Giant three-point arms. Gotta find a top link for this thing. PTO works, at least it was spinning. I don't know if it'll actually apply force. And here, look at this. That takes some hours to do. This thing has definitely been used. to that thing for her though, wow. Now I read on the internet this is a slow turning engine, like 1800 RPMs full out, something like that. Hour meter still doesn't work, speedometer. <laughs> Maybe that one works. Yeah, really nothing works other than the oil pressure gauge, which is reading, uh, what do we say that? It's about 30 PSI at somewhat close to idle-ish. 
Hey, I just remembered, I bought an air tank. <laughs> All right, let's go for a ride. need a lot of adjustment and this clutch return spring is probably done for ah shoot we're kicking the uh, three-point arm I reckon that's what the ran the piece of vacuum line was for better now that there's actually air in that tire. Ah, shouldn't talk up those brakes too much, I guess. Yeah, we are moving. Oh, that sounds good. right now to put the height of this thing in comparison. Man, I know old smoky diesel. I'm wondering if this thing is gonna need a ring job or some work on those valves. I might regret saying this, but neither one should be that major. Yeah, we got another fuel leak coming off of whatever that is. Oh my goodness, major fuel leak. So a couple of these injectors are a little louder than the other like three. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I don't really know what I'm looking at here. You guys know I'm not a mechanic, but everything, I mean, nothing really jumps out at me. Maybe it's just the way it sounds. Whatever the case, we'll give this thing a valve adjustment, make sure you know it's got some fresh fuel without pockets of air and whatnot in there. And hopefully everything works out. Perfect. Let's see if it'll uh, move it idle without stalling. I gotta oil up the linkage on that. I think we're just going to park it over in front of the Farm All H there. Come on! Man, this has really smoothed out quite a bit. Flush feels good. Everything feels good. Look at how tight the steering is. Even with the case million part linkage, this is tight steering. Or actually, you know what? I'm gonna pay, face it, park it face in so we can get to that tire when the new one comes. Man, I, I want to hit the field on this thing already, to be honest. 
It feels like it's ready to go. I know it needs some work, but it feels like it's ready to go. So eye level is about the top of, or I'm sorry, the bottom of the shiny part of the cylinder on that back hill right now. <laughs> King of the world on this thing. just up a little more maybe if I like yeah I'll make a space of every usable inch so we can still get out of here with those tractors all right you know what that's probably good I'm gonna leave this in gear oh. parking brakes not cooperating all right now to stall this thing we just turned the fuel all the way down the throttle I don't know if that's going to work though because there's a lot of slop in this uh, throttle linkage that needs to be adjusted out. That's how the guy did it last night. Oh, yeah, perfect. Wow, what an absolute monster. Put the clutch out here. Shouldn't roll. Set this thing any words. Oh, there we go. Alright, we're in business. Oh, look at this. I guess the uh, three point started working sooner or later. Took all the slack out of that. I like how this uh, clutch mechanism, it has this turnbuckle design so we can shorten this or expand it and thus change where the clutch pedal normally rests. The paint though, I mean, oh this poor old tractor. So this is kind of cool, this front grille pivots here, I mean, I never, I guess it's not that I thought it didn't, it's just I, I hadn't really looked at this yet. This gives us easy access to the air cleaner, this is an oil bath air cleaner and that power steering setup down in there. I really hope I don't have to work on that. <clears throat> I'm getting the duct tape. All right, so what do we know about this thing so far? It has fuel leaks on top of other fuel leaks. The uh, electrical setup is full on burn your barn down level and uh, pretty much none of the gauges other than one work. But it seems like it runs decently. Don't know about the smoke, that'll probably clear up. Like I understand it's an old diesel tractor, it's gonna be smoky, but belching black smoke at idle is a little on the excessive side. But maybe it'll be like that uh, farm we'll see out at the museum in Lindale. That thing smoked quite a bit, you know, granted it's a gas tractor, it smoked quite a bit until we started dragging around that old McCormick Deering with it and, uh, and shock loaded it a few times, dumping the clutch on that, trying to pull start it. Smoke was gone after that point. I wouldn't be surprised if that's all this needs. But uh, yeah, four-speed transmission with a high-low, I don't think I talked about that, uh, that works. At least it did last night when I drove it. And um, yeah, I'm really excited about this thing. I don't know, I'm not really sure what's going to happen to this, but I'm looking forward to it. So, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed getting to drive this thing. And, um, well, project video is coming at some point, probably not for a while. Like I said, I do have some stuff I really need to get done before the end of the year. So that's going to slow me down a little bit, but after that, gonna be in business with this thing. So thanks for watching. Cheers.